Edith asks the same questions every week. How's your job? Are you having any negative thoughts? All I have are negative thoughts. Hello and welcome. This week we're going to be looking at negative thoughts. What are they? What do they do to you? And what can you do about them? So before we get started, I thought it would be good to put in an obligatory disclaimer. Which is a wonderful thing because the internet is so vast and it has a lot of free resources. But with that, then you get some resources that may or may not help you. It's just going to be the, what happens. And so my very first time looking into negative thoughts, I found this worksheet that kind of gave it a very open-ended statement, negative thoughts. And I realized as I was trying to answer the questions and do what it said, I was having a difficult time and I realized really my problem was that I couldn't identify what those negative thoughts were. It was kind of like I have wrapped myself around in a cozy blanket of these thoughts and it didn't even dawn on me that these thoughts were negative. So needless to say, I had to stop with that particular worksheet because it really wasn't helping me at this point. And I do know that there's other ways to think about negative thoughts, all these different kind of like sub categories, sub directions that we can go. That is how I came to find this other sub direction and that would be should be statements. And so that is what the focus will be. Should be statements are pretty self-explanatory. There are statements that include those words, but it can be expanded out to include uh, must be and then also ought to be statements and these are statements that you can make about anything it could be about others others should be like this or a system the gas station should work like this or it could be yourself i should be more like this it can run the gamut as far as what exactly you are looking at as as what should be and so for the video today we're going to be focusing on are should be statements about ourself. So first let's talk about balance. In every aspect of your life, there is both positive and negative. There is positive and negative to situations, to others, and to yourself. But more likely than not, there is one particular area in your life that is off balance. So here I have both positive and negative. And if I'm doing a good job balancing, sometimes it's a little more positive, sometimes it's a little more negative, but ultimately the, it all kind of balances out somewhere in the middle. Or if it's off balance, then all of a sudden I have a lot more negative thoughts and not so many positive thoughts. And so for me, that off balance happens when it comes to myself. When I first thought of should be statements, I thought, well, what's wrong with a should be statement? You're kind of like setting a goal for what you want something to be. It kind of starts with good intentions. So the intentions are you're envisioning something that is better or more ideal. That sounds good, but then what happens is when you do not meet those expectations, that ideal that you have in your mind, that's where the negative thoughts come from. So let's say I come from a family of dancers. I should be a better dancer. And then when you don't meet that expectation, then you start feeling guilty that you're not meeting that expectation. And then you start feeling depressed and anxiety. You want to avoid things that may end up going in that direction. So I'll never attend a dance because I'm afraid that I'm going to have to dance and I can't dance and I come from a home of dancers. Um, that's just an example. But you can see how this is another cycle when it comes to thoughts that is again connected to feelings. And so when we are talking about cycles, the nice thing is once you recognize where this, what the cycle is, 
then you can put a stop to it. So these should be statements. It's kind of in the guise of self-improvement, but really it's to avoid the negative thought and the negativeness of whatever it is. We are focusing in on, unfortunately, a very narrow band of what's really happening to others, to ourselves, to the situation. And ultimately, these negative thoughts continue to add more to that balance. <laughs> Having a negative thought is not a bad thing. I'm telling that to myself because I, uh, we've already experienced that I hate negativity, but there should be a bigger perspective. There are four things that you could do to help you when it comes to the should be statements. The first thing is very practical. Come up with a list of your should be statements. Where are you thinking about these idealized concepts about yourself? And then, now here's the little more difficult part, but try to think of a bigger perspective. If we kind of think about these should be statements as kind of like this box. You have built this box to contain this idea and this is how it exists, this is how it looks. And when it doesn't look like that, then that's where, remember, all the bad negative feelings comes from. But you break the box open and you get the bigger perspective. So not just this very narrow idea of what it should look like. Now, this might be difficult to do because obviously we are constantly thinking like this. But it might be helpful to kind of look around to the people in your life and identify somebody who doesn't have any, well, I shouldn't say that, who doesn't have as much issue with that particular idea than maybe you do. So for me, that would be my husband. We are kind of opposites in that way, where I feel very stuck in certain boxes. He is not stuck in those boxes. When I was doing this activity, I wrote down the should be statement, like in my box, and then I thought about what would my husband do or what would he think or what would he say about that statement? And that helped me to kind of picture what other perspectives are out there and not just relying on my own because my own is very narrow. So for some of these should be statements, I was able to kind of think about how he has responded in the past. Or if it wasn't something that I really had experience seeing him go through, I just asked him, how are you thinking? If this is something that is coming across your mind, what are the different perspectives that you're thinking about? So I thought it might be helpful for me to share one, just so you get an idea. One of my should be statements is, I should not make mistakes. That is something that I have put on myself that I have come to uh, form a belief on for myself. And this little box does not happen all the time. And I get guilty when I make mistakes, I get depressed. And so I need to break out of that box. And so what I wrote is everyone makes mistakes. Instead of focusing on the negative of the mistake, focus on the experience to learn and grow and be better for it because mistakes are going to happen and I need to accept that and then move forward. Whether or not that moving forward means that I have to change as a person, that's a different story. Eradicating that idea that I have to be perfect is going to benefit me in the long run because then I won't be afraid to make mistakes and to put myself out there because guess what? We all make mistakes. So that's an example of a should be statement and then thinking about a different perspective compared to what that initial statement is. I definitely recommend getting something for you to record these things because then it becomes a look into your journey through these, these moments. And whether or not you look back on it, I mean, it might be like five years from now when you look back on it, but it's still interesting to see how far you've gone. That is one thing that I do a lot for my students that I didn't really think about applying to myself. I'm always pointing to them to look at their growth, growth over time. And it is remarkable to see the change that has happened. It's kind of like when you think about weight loss 
you may not notice the teeny tiny changes that happen from day to day. And so every day you kind of look at yourself in the mirror and you seem very similar to the previous day. But then it's when you really look back on pictures from you five months ago, a year ago, and that's where you see the changes. And so it's really good to kind of stop and take a look at those moments when, well, I mean, in weight loss, it's a, literally a snapshot, but figuratively looking at snapshots of where were you at this time? Then five months later, where are you at this time? That's kind of a side note, but I think it's important as we're going through this journey because a lot of the things that we're going to uncover and we're going to understand about ourselves are going to be maybe kind of go underneath the radar when it comes to noticing a change. So the next three things to think about as you're going through this process are more general concepts that are not as practical as that first one. And they would be to be compassionate to yourself. I need to unpack that a little bit more because I'm not exactly sure what that means to be compassionate to yourself. And it might be as simple as whatever you are doing to be compassionate to others, then you give yourself that same respect. Another idea is to accept your shortcomings. And so in the article that I was reading about the should be statements, this statement was there and I thought it was very poignant. And it was, I accept myself where I am in this process today. And I know that at this point right now, it feels like I'm just giving myself lip service. I'm just saying it. But I feel like if you start filling in the pool of thoughts with more positive thoughts, then the negative pool of thoughts will start diminishing. So we can open the drain and let some of those negative thoughts come out of the pool plug that drain in, throw in some more positive thoughts. And whether or not I actually believe it yet, it's at least something that is adding some positivity. And I, I know that there is research out there that says, if you smile, you'll start feeling better. Well, I am going to connect that also to, to say, when you start saying positive things about yourself, then you start feeling more positive. And then Lastly, we want to celebrate our strengths. And I, I do have to say, as I was getting ready for this, I was thinking that a lot of the things that we've been talking about lately have been negative. And so that's just telling me that I want to make sure that I'm including some more positive things when we're looking at ourselves. We want to balance it, right? It's all about balance. Yes, negative. Yes, positive. I should be able to carry all the groceries home. What the heck is wrong with me? First of all you are 75 years old. You try to motivate yourself with should and should nots. It created a lot of guilt for you. How about accepting that you are 75? I don't know what the heck you are talking about. Well, we have come to the end of the video this week and our topic on negative thoughts, at least for now. Maybe this has propelled you to think about some of the negative thoughts that you have for yourself, for others, for situations, and to start thinking about how to break out of those should be boxes and really get the full perspective of both positive and negative of who you are. And I hope that you join me next time when we look at something different. And with that, I will say goodbye. act together with this balance. But is there another cycle? A unicycle? My teeth look really good. That's because I just came from the dentist.